let me know. Okay, this is the call to order of the September 13th, 2022 open public meeting of the Needham Library Board of Trustees being held via hybrid format, uh, allowing remote participation under the Massachusetts Commonwealth Act adopted during the pandemic state of emergency. First, I'll take a roll call to confirm the trustees, library staff, and other persons anticipated to be on the agenda are present and can hear me. Uh, for the trustees, we have Anna Geraldo Kerr. Hi. Present. Jay Fialco. Here. Tom Harkins. Here. Carol Thomas. Here. Ralph Pettit. Here. Earhart Grafe. Here. And myself, KK Hill. Here. Um, of, for library staff tonight, we have Director Kim Hewitt. Here. And uh, any other library staff? Dimitri. Okay. Dimitri. I'm over here. Kyriakos, Assistant Director, and other, and Gay Allen um, Dennett. So, and in addition, we have at the table with us tonight, Kelly Lineman, Linehan, Linehan. Linehan. Very close. Uh, and Very um, close. joining us tonight. Um, anyone else? Oh, and, oh, Faith, like, how could I forget? Faith Chrisley, right? Right. Um, uh, doing the minutes for us tonight. Uh, and what about, we have someone from the Library Foundation of Needham tonight? Joan Smith, no? No. Not tonight. Okay. Uh, okay. So this meeting is being recorded. Remote participants, please mute your phones or computers when not speaking. Uh, if there is a problem that prevents the completion of this meeting, we'll re reconvene at 7 p.m. October 10th, 2022. Um, I'd like to request a motion to call the Needham Board of Library Trustees to order at 7:04. So moved. Second. Second. Second Rob. Uh, all in favor of calling to order, say aye. 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 Unanimous. Um, so our first item on the agenda is a public comment session. If there is anybody here in person who would like to comment to the Board of Trustees, now is the time. More comment. Um, and I will say that uh, during the meeting, uh, people who are attending only remotely, um, and if they want to make a comment at that point, they you can use the they can do so only by chat function during the meeting. Um, all right. So now we um, do the minutes for this for tonight. Uh, have, have people reviewed the minutes? Are they have does anyone have comments or changes they want to make tonight? I think so. I had a couple, yeah. a couple little things. Um, on page three, number five, it says we're not a cooling station at the library. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, on page five, first paragraph, it's a line. It should be proposals, not plans. Two proposals are submitted. For those, and then the second line for projects less than ten thousand dollars. That's fine. At least three proposals are required to meet the guidelines for those projects less than ten thousand dollars. Yes, the projects less than ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Projects. Mm -hmm. Other than that, um, page six. Um, uh, for the art committee, the, number 10, um, if you could just stop it after the words watercolors in the second line, that sentence should end there. Laurie Bogdan is not going to be in the basis. So okay. that's not what I meant. Let's go ahead. Thank you. Anyone else have any uh, amendments to the minutes? She was going to be in the cases at some point in the prior minutes. Did we not follow up with her? She was approved, uh, but she does not want to be in the case. Oh. So she wanted to be on the wall, and so we're going to reconsider uh, oh. for future. Uh, the work is small, which is what we were thinking the case might be better. More on that later. Okay. Any further 
to the minutes. Okay, so in that case, um, I have a question. Oh, no, no. Since I was in the field, mm -hmm. I would abstain from. Um, I yeah. don't think we need to, but if you feel because, it's more comfortable I mean, doing that, that's fine. Um, okay. Uh, Tom? Tom. Dimitri, can you hear all this? Yes, I can. I can, okay, because it's awfully soft here. <laughs> yeah, okay, so let's everybody speak up, okay, because, it is, you know, it is soft, but I have my speakers turned up all the way, so no, I can hear it. <laughs> okay, but all of us, you know, we need to be able to hear each other, so, okay, let's yell. Um, so, uh, in that case, uh, I'd need a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Move. Okay, and a second. Second. Uh, all in favor of approving the minutes? Say aye. 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 All opposed? Passed unanimously. Thanks. Um, so now we have Kim's director's report. All right, thank you. So this month we completed the ARIS reports. Um, that is a report that's sent every year to the MDLC, which is the Mass Board of Library Commissioners. It's what helps determine state aid numbers for us. Um, there was a large issue this year where the date kept getting pushed back. Um, and it's actually due this Friday. So ours is all set, uh, it's been handed in, which is great. And the reason there was an issue was because Baker and Taylor had a very large outage. Um, they were hacked and uh, they were down for a few weeks um, and they operate the software that MBLC uses to collect their statistics. Uh, we hired our strategic planning consultant, Kelly Linehan, who will you know, be speaking to us later. Uh, we've also had a few really great initiatives set off by the town. There, there's a townwide initiative to put period products into buildings. And so um, almost all of our bathrooms now have those dispensers. We're um, in the process of getting them for the two that don't currently. And I have a comment on there where I wrote about time. Yeah, <laughs> I know, great. Um, we're in the very beginning stages of um, maybe getting a sharps container as well, but I'll have more on that if it, if it comes to pass. Um, and then there was also a discussion from HR about having spaces for lactation, the like private spaces in your buildings. And that got us thinking about where we would direct someone if they were looking for that privacy. And so Sarah Breen's mom, uh, our head of reference, her mom actually sewed um, a nice little hanging thing that we can kind of put up in the glass section of the door for any of the study rooms. So we have one panel, like a hanging panel on a rod. And then we just got command strips on the back side of the door. And so we can use it at any of them. And we put signs up in different parts of the building, letting people know if they need privacy for that okay. to ask at the desk. Um, so that was really great and very special thanks to her mom for doing that. Yes. That um, so those do are, it. Yeah. Those are no, good no more sitting in a bathroom stall. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> That'd be nice. Um, also, um, I hope that some of you got a chance to look around on the first floor because the Friends Bookshop has officially moved. Uh, really huge thanks to the Friends for being so accommodating and helpful um, to get everything over there, especially to Keith and Lynn McClelland um, and to Angel for all of his work with custodians to put the shelving all together and help out. Um, this is really, really great. And I think it looks wonderful. And with that, yeah. oh, oh yes, could sorry. I just uh, mm -hmm. back up a little uh, the mm -hmm. privacy screen? Yes, um, I, I see that it, it's here as a lactation room, but I'm wondering if it could be a multi use and not only lactation. I'm thinking of people who may need to give uh, themselves insulin shots or check or any other medications that they need a little bit more as opposed to just you know doing. I don't think we want to encourage people to do stuff like that in the study room necessarily because so, we're involving bodily fluids. And, I, yeah, I know that. Um, we, I don't know. You know, I know people with diabetes tend to just yeah. use the bathroom and try to. I mean, manage. sure. So it doesn't have what to be we limited. don't want yeah. is necessarily so everyone to use kind of, the privacy yeah. screen for other reasons. So that, that's yes, what if people came and talked to us, I'm sure we would. We would yeah. let them use it. But yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, oh yes. Yeah, in that regard. Uh, it was a, uh, a patron at 
going down to do the fluid backpack up against the seat. You want the privacy to go towards the seat. <laughs> Say that the, the, to make sure that the, uh, the reasons were being. You don't want the right. person who's asking to look too sleepy. <laughs> if it's a regular person, you know. <laughs> yes, he was a regular person. Yeah, he was. All right. So the open holds are here as well. Um, so patron requests are now found on the shelving where the bookshop had been. I think it's looking really great. We're getting a lot of really good feedback overall. Um, we have a few small tweaks coming here or there to make it even easier to kind of find your stuff, um, like adding maybe some more colorful um, signage and things like that. So we're excited about it. The puzzles moved to the back side of that shelving unit. So they're now facing the music CDs um, and they're kind of displayed out instead of just kind of stacked and it looks really nice. Um, so this is, making room uh, behind the circulation desk now for the library of things materials to go and we're looking at having that rolled out by mid-october um, the baker and taylor issue kind of set us back a little bit uh, but we're nearly there uh, do you have like a, a list of the things that we've collected that we plan to make available we do, and um, it's been given to the friends and i'm not sure if i had sent it out to the trustees at some point but i can make a note to do that That'd be good. Yeah, I'd like to. Um, yeah, we'll I remember what we were thinking about asking for, but I don't remember. <laughs> we, we didn't yes. serve it, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we did. Um, I'm not even going to guess at the number. I do. I forget at this point. But we got everything. You know, the friends were very generous about funding yeah. the entire startup collection. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, so last month. Uh, Sarah and reference had an adult craft kit that was distributed to 32 participants. Aaron Bassett had a really successful make your own ice cream event, which had 30 mm -hmm. people attend. Um, the technical services department has finished recataloging the AV World Cinema Collection. Um, they had all been labeled as foreign films before, and they were all interfiled alphabetically in English. Um, regardless of the language that they were in. And so we've now grouped them by the language that they're in and alphabetically from there um, and changed it to world link, world cinema, um, kind of as you've seen me do for us to with some of the other areas, just making it a little more inclusive and not using the word foreign. May I ask you a quick question about the world cinema items? Are, do they, are they subtitled for English speakers or are they strictly? I think it's whatever. probably very specific to the DVD. I think most of them are. It would depend. Yeah. Okay. It's probably very specific okay. to the item. Yeah. Um, tech services also finished up the, you know, updating the folios collection. So now it is the oversized collection. Um, and we're shifting in nonfiction. And those oversized items are going to be put into their appropriate location within that now instead of all at that back shelf. Uh, so we're really excited to see that kind of coming to completion as well. Kelly? Yes. Um, I just had a question about the CDs, uh, uh, DVDs, excuse me. Um, I don't think our statistics separate those out, um, but I'd be curious how much use they get. I mean, there's so much more streaming now than there used to be. And you know, we spend probably a fair amount of money on DVDs, um, which is great if they're hard to yeah, I'm so always surprised when I find out people are still borrowing them. Yeah, yeah so I wonder still, about that or you I know do. what those numbers are looking like and trending. Yeah. Um, so I know I talked like, about redoing the statistics anyhow. Um, the staff that I need to work with on that have been out a lot recently. So we're getting there. But I do want to see a lot of our collections pulled out. A it's bit the more. same question for CDs. Yeah. Yeah, same yeah, thing. yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and just to mention one of the wonderful things about DVDs that we've found if you don't want to subscribe to every or can't afford to start, subscribe to all these streaming services, you can get some of the really great series and movies mm -hmm. on, on DVD. Um, Part yeah. of our library, of you still have also. your DVD player, yeah, <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Part of our library of things collection is also going to have several Roku's that will have a streaming service attached oh. to it. Um, so I'm sure those will get a lot of use and then we'll yeah. need to add more. 
Uh, but yes, people are certainly still really taking out DVDs and CDs. It's less so than it used to be for sure. And I definitely see that declining, but right now it's- um, We so have the same no fine policy for late returns on the Library of Things. And we don't have any fines. So they can take a Roku and for an extended period of time. Yeah, same as every yeah. item, I guess, that you check out. Yeah. And then beyond a certain period of time, they get charged if they don't turn it. Correct. Yeah. Yes, they get charged a replacement fee, and we would be able to turn it off. Um, just like with our hotspots, that's kind of mm -hmm. how we handle that as well. We turn off the service to it, and then they tend to find their way home. Um, okay, so. Children's had a really successful uh, registration for their summer reading challenge. They had over a thousand participants. Well, and the great. final uh, summer reading program for children's was a magic show with Mike Bent. And we had 127 people attend, which was quite a large gathering. So it's great. Um, this month is library card sign up month. So we're trying to do some outreach around that. Um, children's have secured little comic books to give away. Um, I forget where Paula got them from, but it was great, you know, she had the great idea to grab it so that we could give them away to children who were getting a card for the first time, and teens as well. Um, we were supposed to do outreach today at Captain Robert Cook Drive, which is one of the housing authority um, buildings, and it got rained out, so we're going on Thursday, actually, um, and we'll be signing folks up there for cards, and we're we're bringing books to give away, things like that, just to get out kind of in the community. So who does that? Going out to the outreach. So Dimitri was going to go, mm -hmm. someone from Children, someone from Surf, someone from Reference, and then I was going to stop by as well because there are a few other town departments that are going to be there, like the police department, and I'm still working on making those connections, so we're all going to go. Uh, I like Danielle's the idea. Idea. And the, Danielle's Danielle. going to go through, yeah. Okay. I was gonna, I was sorry, I was going to say I, I like the idea about making a big deal when someone gets their first library card. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yes, it's fun. Kids get very excited. Yeah. Yes, and I like the idea of going out, reaching out, and not just for like a reading or something, but you know, explaining what is available because there's so much more. Yeah, maybe We're we can excited. give them a certificate to go with their first card with the date. <laughs> <laughs> Take a picture. I forget where I got something like that. <laughs> We're very excited to go. Oh, I got that. I'm sorry, but I got that at a baseball game where they saw if you have a kid there, is it the first game? And then they give you a nice certificate. <laughs> this is Aww. the date for your first game. And uh, it's very cute. Yes. So um, we're looking forward to that on Thursday. I was hoping that they have indoor space today, but apparently not. Uh, we've also been going to the farmer's market and in, you know, in one event, I guess, um, the person who went interacted with 30 people during that time. So it's still, you know, they're getting a lot of uh, opportunities to have conversations with people out in the community. Right. And so we're excited about um, doing a few more of those this fall. And then on that, on that, on that question, yeah. more that, um, are, is the library participating on that fall fair? Is the harvest fair, I think it's uh, October 2nd. We're still Not having it without the town comment? Uh, the, the Greensfield. Uh, Greensfield. Greensfield. Yeah. I think that the Library Foundation is doing it. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. I don't know that the library is. Yes, I don't think we're doing it. Uh, okay. I'll double check. Um, let me just keep it on. Sorry. Rob, does All that right. sound right that the Library Foundation has a table at the Harvest Fair this fall? I think so. Yeah, Usually it's the past. Maybe I'll check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And then um, last week, Dimitri and Robin Flynn went to the North Hill Retirement Community to discuss our materials by mail program, to share about different apps that we have to offer. And um, Robin was, you know, talking up the technology help that's available at the library too. And they were saying a lot of folks had iPhones and they were just really excited to talk about a couple quick questions. How many people had. came to that? 45, 45. Okay, wow. Great. That's terrific. Question for Dimitri. Um, do we find, and anybody who knows here in this room, um, do we find the North Hill community tends to use the uh, Native Public Library we, much? We have a ton of North Hill residents who use the materials by mail program. So the, all the people that came to our program when I went up with Robin, none of them use it. 
but they all heard about it from other residents. So that was that that was it was more word of mouth talking to their other uh, friends that you know that use it and rave about it. So um, we have an average. I don't know what the percentage of how many of our users of materials by mail are North Hill residents, but quite a few are. They should arrange for a, a van to take a field trip for <laughs> residents to, to come to the library. That would well, make sense. But but and we are going to make we are going to do another outing on there. Um, focusing the majority of those forty five folks had iPhones. And they had a zillion questions for Robin and myself, you know, about how to download different apps, how to stream, how to, they were really quite, they were, they were great. They were great. So we're, we're going to do another outing out there sooner rather than later and specifically focus on devices and tech help and streaming and all that kind of stuff. So it was great. They were very gracious, the staff there. And yeah, it was a great experience. So, but 45. Nice. Nice. Make sure they have the Minuteman app. They, yep. uh, they're, they're working on getting all the apps they can. They had a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I was just going to say one more thing about North Hill is that they do have their own library. In fact, when yeah. they, when they call their collection, they give their discards to the friends for the book sale. Um, so that's yeah, we, we actually yeah. brought a book back to them from their library that got returned to our library. So that was kind of funny. It's like, this one's one of yours. <laughs> They don't offer the you know all the other services, so this is yeah, really yeah. a big plus to uh, show up there and tell them about what else. Mm -hmm. it's great, great. It's really wonderful. Nice, nice work. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so we're looking forward to kind of hopefully getting out there a lot more. Um, but these were some really strong efforts uh, to get that going since COVID. Really, these were some of our first outings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, or I guess I should say since COVID, but since the pandemic shuts down. Um, okay, so for personnel, um, Molly McDougall, who was a children's librarian, left her position on September 2nd to take on a full-time position. Very sad loss for us, mm -hmm. she was wonderful. Um, we've been in the process of interviewing for two open cert positions. We are planning to make verbal offers tomorrow, so that's moving along quickly. Uh, and then for gifts, we have Marion Irving, who gave $100 in memory of Ruth Cunningham. Marielle Harlow donated two Ikea kids chairs in a reading lap support with an estimated value of $100 for like the read to a dog program um, to help with that. And Barbara Kachanek uh, donated $500 for children's books in Polish. Leslie and Larry Sugarman and about 15 of their neighbors collectively sent $350 in memory of Gloria Sexton. And Denise Bowser donated an audiobook on CD with a value of about $20. Uh, and so that is our gift report. And I would love to have a motion to approve it. I move to accept those gifts. Second. Um, all in favor of accepting the gifts as described, say aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous. Kim, where would you go and get the the children's books in Polish. What, what is the I'm not sure of the vendor, but we have a vendor set up because I believe either this person has donated to us before for that purpose, um, or other people have because I know Paula has mentioned we've gotten we've received donations for books in Polish, and so she has a vendor and she has that question okay. development. Okay. All right, so um, on to building and grounds. That's what we said. Uh, we completed a lot of furniture and shelving units this past month. Um, the custodians completed air filter changes throughout the building and a contractor um, installed new uh, uh, carbon dioxide sensors throughout the building. Monox, right? I'm sorry? Monoxide? Sorry. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> thank you. Um, and John Green Electrical <laughs> Contractor installed lighting in the Rosemary parking lot and changed out some in the Highland Ave lot as well. Um, they also just this weekend uh, repainted, or we're supposed to repaint some, some of Highland Ave, although now that I'm saying it, I don't know that it actually got done because it doesn't look it, but it will be happening soon if it hasn't already, so that's coming. Um, there was the installation of the period product dispensers, and then the leak in the foyer just outside the doors was repaired. Unfortunately, some of the wood was ruined, so buildings is working on replacing that, which is why you can see into the ceiling right now. Uh, but that will be coming soon. And then 
uh, we're still waiting on the lights near the large print section. Again, they're installed but not yet completed. We're planning to have the reconditioning of the bluestone out in the lobby. And then um, the sink area inside the pantry here is going to be reconfigured. Um, Angel said he was going to follow up with buildings about moving that along because it's here every month and I think it's yeah. been here for a few years. Um, just to see what the movement is and, and get a kind of update on that. Okay. Uh, same with the alarms on the staircase A and staircase B. Uh, oh yes, and then working on getting the parking lot stripes repainted in the Highland Ave. Uh, so those that Highland Avenue uh, parking lot is owned by the church across the street, right? Yep. But we do the maintenance. The building department. The building was yeah, repainted. they offered to repaint it because it doesn't look great, right. and since it's next to our building, it just yeah they didn't feel it was our patrons that nice, they allow so, our patrons. yeah. So they're just doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they worked out a little. Okay. Um, for financial reports, we had regular spending in overdrive. Uh, four thousand dollars for sorry four thousand four hundred five dollars and forty cents and then for canopy we had two payments that was for july and august the invoices didn't come in time for us to have them in the report last month that was five hundred seventy six dollars for uh, july and then four hundred eighty dollars for august and then with the trust funds there was a disbursement of three hundred forty six dollars for adult fiction books from baker and taylor the Charlie Fund had a disbursement of $85.09 for nonfiction children's books from Baker and Taylor. The Hatch Fund had $1,120. Uh, and that was mostly large print books, either from Cengage or Centerpoint. And uh, a small amount of that was for world language children's books for multicultural books and videos. The PDF Fund, the Permanent Donation Fund, had a $2,705 disbursement. Uh, some of that was for DVDs from Baker and Taylor, YA books from Baker and Taylor, and fiction books from Baker and Taylor. Um, so fiscal year 22, or sorry, yeah, 22, is, um, is nearly wrapped up. Jenna is still waiting on one more invoice to come. So she said it's a, a vendor that is typically slow to get the invoices. The items have arrived, but that's why we don't have um, the kind of wrap up that I mm -hmm. mentioned last month. Yep. Um, Hopefully, we'll see it next month. Uh, we'll see the annual figures. Yes. Can I, can I ask a question? It won't change it too dramatically, though. Okay. Yes. I remember when you when you came aboard, there were some issues about some of the records being in print copies only and not computer copies. Have, has there been a sort of a, a complete transition? For tracking the trust funds? So Just generally, the, you know, the financial records. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Jenna's been extremely helpful in making sure that that is uh, taken care of now. Great. So for our statistical report, um, circulation was down slightly from the month prior, but it's still trending upwards from June of 2020. Um, many more people entered the library in July of this year than last summer. So that's all kind of what we'd expect to be seeing. Um, Study room use is remaining really consistent month to month, but it's, you know, again, much higher than 2021. Uh, and now that we have the third room, I think that's been really helpful. You know, we weren't really seeing turnaways before that, but, you know, there's there's definitely an increased demand, and especially with school starting back up, it's just nice to have three rooms to offer. Uh, programs slowed down in the summer for adults in YA. So you can see that reflected in the numbers as well. But there were 23 programs in the children's department and they had over 972 people attend to them. So oh. pretty good numbers. Uh, that includes the children and the caregivers. Yeah, anyone who attends, oh. yes. Yeah. Uh, and that I think brings me to the end of my report. Yeah. Right? Yes. Okay. Any other further questions for Kim? because uh, we're moving on to our new business, um, where we are about to meet, yes. Kelly, Kelly Linhan. Linhan. Um, and I guess, Kim, you're gonna do yeah. an introduction? 
So, yes, this is Kelly Cunningham. <laughs> um, she's going to be a strategic Stop. planning consultant. Yes. Uh, Kelly is the director of Waltham Public Library, which probably sounds familiar because that's where I came from. <laughs> Um, and so you can thank her or hate her uh, because we thank her. Probably <laughs> um, but Kelly is, you know, really well respected in our field, really has great knowledge about uh, what libraries are meant to be and kind of the vision is there for how we want them to operate, um, not just how they have operated. So I'm really excited to have her guidance through this process as well. Um, and I'll let you kind of take it out. Yeah. I got a just a brief overview, as Kim said, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very proud and excited to be working with Kim. Um, in this way, I've been the library director of Waltham for about almost eight years now. Prior to that, I was the more recently the manager of public services for the Cambridge Public Library System. Um, I'm just coming off my seventh year on the executive board with the Minuteman Network. Um, that last year being the past president, I was the president during COVID. Um, and some issues with some other major public libraries. So I'm very happy to be retired from that. And now I'm the, um, I'm the Mass Library Association representative to the New England Library Association. Um, and I, for a while, a little while now, I've been doing some sort of side consulting, um, primarily in personnel issues, a little bit of union negotiations and in uh, some, some job coaching. Um, I, Many, many years ago, did Waltham strategic plan without hiring a consultant. Um, I felt like I sort of found my niche. I'm really obsessed with strategic planning. You know, if you take all those Myers Briggs and strength based leadership courses, one of my number one strengths is um, five year planning. I think my husband would also back that up. I'm big into our what is, but what does the future look like and where are we um, trying to go there? And one thing I sort of noticed while I was doing our strategic plan is that. I, um, I think one of the good things about strategic planning and the Mass Board of Library Commissioners is that there's no strict parameters of what a strategic plan should look like. And the bad thing about it is that there are no strict parameters of what um, a strategic plan should look like. And I found, I found a few flaws in a lot of the examples I was looking at. Um, so I started, you know, based on a lot of research and other people who are doing amazing work, um, developing more of a community-based approach to really focusing on what the, what the community is saying is important to them and not just what's important. Um, I think this is where a lot of libraries go wrong, not just what's important to about the library or for the library, but what is happening in people's lives in the world around us at that time. Mm -hmm. So that is a direction. I think typically the library knows the right thing to do, uh, but we wanna hear what it is, how we should shift and change that to meet um, the patrons' needs. Um, I, uh, very happy to be proven wrong. I started doing a system called the CAR exercise, which is keep, acquire, reinvent, or retire. So you do that as part of the focus group to kind of figure out what's going on. It's, it's a similar version to the SOAR, the, I think it's strengths, opportunities, opportunities something, something. <laughs> uh, sorry, I've been doing CAR for so long. Uh, and the sort of, the rumor is, is that I invented CAR. Um, a lot of people have been trying to prove that wrong. I don't want to take credit for it. I'm sure I stole it from someplace, but we have not been able to attribute it to anybody else. So there's very, very little glory in the library world. I, I'm very, I, the librarians are, I'm very happy to credit where credit is due, but I, I don't know where I picked that up. Uh, so CAR stands again for what? Keep, acquire, reinvent, and retire. And it's a good exercise, particularly with the staff, just to sort of um, brainstorm and usually there's a lot of not a lot right but for some people things that you would want to keep they want to keep or mm -hmm. things that you want to retire so it's a really great way to kind of get everything on paper and see where things um and so yeah i've been doing some strategic consulting on the side and i'm very excited to work um, with kim and with needham i think this is actually a very um i think two things are very good about this one is that you know kim knows um from firsthand experience i I don't think that I'm the best, that I want to be the best. And that is uh, very much a driving force um, in the work that I do and my team does. And I know that Kim feels the same way because I have <laughs> a very small way of push her in the direction of, you know, greatness is only the level. You know, that's when we know we can stop, right? Um, and I, I think the other side about that is 
I was really excited that you weren't in such a huge hurry. I think, you know, some people want to rip the bandaid off and get a strategic plan done in a month and have it prepared. Um, I liked that you were willing to take a little time with it because I think it's a benefit for everybody, but it particularly speaks to understanding that the patrons need a little time, you know, to process and not every, you know, if you have three focus groups in one week, not if what if people are on vacation or people aren't there, they've got COVID or something else happened. So I, I liked that you were willing to um, not draw it out forever, but give people a little bit of time to really be thoughtful about it um, and spend that spend that little extra time on it. So those are two very chilling things for me. Would anyone like to ask um, Kelly a question while we have her here? I would love to ask a question. Um, so one of the things that all of us uh, looked at ahead of today um, was actually the, the plan from uh, 2017 um, that you had worked on at Walmart. Yeah. Um, and so we all looked through that. Um, and I would love to just kind of have you tell us a little bit about what went into producing that? Because you said you ran it yourself. Yep. Um, uh, and and it produced kind of, uh, there were some overview sections here about kind of like demographics of wall fam sure. and like status of like the community. Yep. Um, and then um, and then there were some, uh, there was some summaries of like things that were ongoing that you were working on. Um, and then it ended with these tables of kind of like uh, uh, goals, objectives, and actions. Sure. Yep. Um, and so can you help us just kind of think about that as a tool um, that we might be working toward. Um, now you're referring to the examples. To the wall fan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so uh, with the wall fan, long range plan from 2018 to okay. 2022. Yeah. And I, I had a similar question, Zach, because it would seem that to some extent we're not reinventing the wheel. In other words, other libraries and other have similar concerns balancing the physical and the digital and, and all that stuff. And sure. so we want to. Sure take advantage of what's already known. And I'm not sure how different our exercise is from, 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 yeah. from all of these others. Yeah, I think those are great questions. I think, I mean, I think there's a number of way, ways to look at. I think right now is a really great time to do a strategic plan because we're just starting to come post pandemic and we're looking at so many major changes in the world. There's the, the quiet resignation, right? The, um, the, the shift in jobs and um, everything about moving to digital resources and virtual meetings so many things there, right? Economic turmoil. So that'll be an interesting reflection in how that, what that looks like for your specific patrons at your variety of ages, um, but also your staff as well as staffing this building, but their own individual journeys and what they're gonna bring um, in terms of their work here. Um, so I'm excited to just sort of dive into that a little bit. For that strategic plan, we took a whole year so we could really take time and talk to. We did a ton of individualized focus groups um, I also did some user experience studies with my own staff. We had closed for a staff day um, and really discussed who we weren't serving um, and sort of very specific design views on that end. Um, in terms of the focus groups, we went out to various locations. We went out to the senior center. We went out to um, the day center, which is the homeless shelter. Um, we did a Spanish speaking um, focus group. We, did one with teens, children, and families. We did one very broad one. Um, and what we really did at each of those is um, really got to know the people who sort of showed up and started asking them what was happening in their lives and what was going on in the community and using all of their concerns, you know, what they wanted for the city, what their kind of hopes were, goals and concerns, and, and just had a general conversation, took a ton of notes, and then sort of extrapolate, extrapolated that data with sort of what was happening currently in the world. Um, and then work from there to see how the library could piece itself into those, what we felt was the best option for that. I think that was a very specific move that we chose to take that direction for the strategic plan. And obviously you'll all have a say um, in certain Kimmel feelings on what direction you want to take it um, as well. You know, sometimes another more recent strategic plan that I've been working on um, for another library to the library sustainability was something that was really important. We, talked about it, um, sorry, we also ran a survey in Waltham, you know, with so this library, we also ran a survey and we asked them about sustainability, but it really didn't come up. It was sort of a forced topic that we, we kind of rolled in to see how people felt about it, um, but it was so important to the library that it's still an area and a goal for them and we talked about how sustainability could get incorporated in, 
um, different variations of the library, which is a long way of just saying that, you know, it's not all, um, it really does have to be a collective exercise. I, I think um, when I had put together the proposal for Kim, I don't know if you need to do it um, quite so broken down uh, as that, right? It, it, it just sort of depends on what you, what you're interested in and how you want to do it. We did the staff only version. I think that's very important as well. I think for the staff only version, um, also, I think it's helpful if uh, there's, uh, I would recommend a session, um, you know, with, without Kim present actually the whole time, but, um, you know, we do want to be present for part of it. And then I would actually ask Kim to remove himself just so I could talk to the staff um, without any sort of administrative uh, oversight, just to make sure they felt like they were you know, keeping everything sort of privileged and be able to say their part. Um, I sort of drifted off a little yeah. bit because I started talking about the other one too. Do, does that sort of explain? Yeah, um, you talked a lot about uh, methodology there. And I was, I was just curious about um, thinking of this thing as a tool, right? For us to, yeah. um, to, to be holding ourselves accountable as well as doing yeah. uh, planning. And so I'm just curious how you think about that in terms of what we're trying to get to by the end so that we have something that's really useful. For yeah. Us. So I think actually that's what it ties into what you're saying with the, how I broke down those goals and action items. Yeah. I, I think it's important, but it, it really matters most to what you all want to do. I think it's very important to have very specific action items that you can actually check off and say, yes, we did this, um, and that there's some sort of finality to it. Um, I spoke about this in a little bit you know, with Kim about a, a strategic plan really well done. Um, as cheesy as it sounds, I think it really should be, it's a promise and a commitment to your community of how you are going to serve them. And, and being too vague, it just doesn't hold anybody accountable to anything, right? Yeah. It's too, like, it's all that work for almost for nothing. I mean, it's just driving me, you know, if we're going to do it, let's do it right, put it all out there, what we're going to achieve. And then we actually have focus on where your goals are going to be. Um, sorry, I was just thinking, so much. <laughs> it drives me crazy when I see a strategic plan that's so like, you know, it doesn't matter how long it is, right? That's the other thing too that drives me crazy. Like sometimes they're like 400, you know, yeah, right? But they're a lot of pages long and you're like, we couldn't nail this down. Well, we, we had looked as a, you know, as a, as a model of sorts, yeah. as a style as much as substance at the Framingham plan, okay. which was, a, you know, comparatively briefer yep. in terms of content. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, um, and, and something that sort of served as not only a guide, you know, for us, but as a selling document to the yeah. community yeah. Of, about the library. Absolutely. And I think it's important for trying to raise money, right, as well, um, depending on what those goals are for that, too. But you need to have a plan that says, look at all these things that we're going to need money for. And if I could just really quickly tie it back into that demographic session section that I did, yeah. I felt like um, that's actually coming very handy in Waltham. I thought that was a very useful thing to do because it was also important for us to look at that actual census data and see, does it match up with our actual circulation data and, and library card paper data? Does that does that all match up? And, you know, I know Kim's done a little bit of that work for Needham already, and we'll talk about that later, but um, we want to make sure those things line up. And if there is a big disconnect, we need to connect the dots and figure out why why that is, I think that's often the case. We could look at all your data and not see a big discrepancy. And so maybe we would just put, you know, maybe we wouldn't put all necessarily, we don't need to put 20 pages of demographic data if there's nothing really we're trying to draw from that data. Although it is, you know, I would say it's a good exercise. Typically the reference staff, you know, the King's direction will put together that demographic because I think it's a really great way to get the staff um, really involves and really helps sort of rehome their idea of who it is who the people are. In, in we want to know who we serve. We want to know who we serve. So I think that's an important element for the library to take on. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, and Rob, uh, Tom next. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Have you seen uh, the last uh, the last I have. I have. Um, it's a tome. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's long. It's, it's, you know, I'm not, I'm not here to criticize anybody else's work. And I think, you know, I think it's a just a different time. Do you think that was measurable? 
I would no. Uh, I didn't think it was as measurable as I would have wanted it to be. That being said, it may have been appropriate for you at that time, right? It's, I don't want to be that person who comes in and, and right for Waltham. I I wanted to have very specific. We are going to hire an ELO coordinator, a mm -hmm. coordinator, however I um, had phrased it. And I will say we got everything done, almost every single thing done that is on that list. Um, one of the items that I had was to, I'd like us to be a bilingual staff, a truly bilingual staff. We're not 100% there, but we are way further along than we have. And we did an all staff training. To, we spent a day learning Spanish and key phrases to help um, Spanish as the predominant second language in the walking too. So I think having it that specific literally allowed, you know, allowed me to say, and here, here are your goals for the next five years. I'll make sure we're all speaking Spanish fluently, and then we'll know. <laughs> then we'll know you're getting a goodie. And that yeah. so. The next one might be in Spanish. <laughs> Absolutely. That one. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Anna. Hi. Hi. A couple of uh, thoughts. Uh, one is to also consider. Last July, the town manager met with us, and she shared some fantastic news that the library really enjoys. I think it was 95% of approval. I mean, we, they love us. They, you know, those, the folks who answered the, the survey, that it wasn't randomized or anything. I think it was just whoever, you know, was circulated in different areas. Um, so we have this, um, the folks who, who are invested in coming to the library, building a relationship library, they're all in. So we have, I just want to put that out there as a factor to consider as like, what, you know, we're already up there. What the gap for those for that audience is very narrow. What else can, how can we elevate our service? How can, what do we sure. love when we are already meeting their needs or exceeding their needs? Um, so that, that's one thing. The other thing is, um, um, I think there's also uh, the, the group that is not, that is uh, using other means, other meeting media or other services whether it's online, whether it's school libraries, college libraries, or other sources. So we kind of have, I think we have two groups, those who are fully invested and those who are not even, you know, in, on our, you know, we're, on their, we're not in the radar. So. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting just bringing up the, just the approval rating, um, seeing to get our hands on that study and what they're actually mm -hmm. doing. That's what yeah. you would comment on, yes. I think, uh, Gerhard. Right, yeah, because yeah. yeah. it's an important thing. Um, you know, we will we'll talk to the patrons and see, and I do find sometimes not having, um, you know, that I, it's been my experience that if you take the staff out of the room and you ask people like, tell me the truth, I wanna know everything, give me everything. Do you come in here and get the very best customer service of your entire life? Is this like, it's a really big hotel, Four Seasons. I don't think I've stayed in Four Seasons, but like, is this like Four Seasons in the Seychelles level service or like, where, where are we at? They will be very honest. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'll be excited yeah. to actually challenge some of those assumptions that we yeah, have absolutely. too. And That's hopefully they will come back and just say, this is the most amazing place, um, you know. Yeah, but that'll be a fun thing too. And hopefully everybody will be open to, um, you know, to hearing that feedback, not just you, I mean, specifically, even just talking with the staff and saying, here's what some of your patients told me, now you tell me, does that line up, right? Does it make sense what they're saying? Is there a reason for that? Um, the last strategic plan I did for our library confidentially, one of the things the patients kept telling me was uh, <laughs> how um, tight their book budgets were, and that was why they were having a lot of these issues. And so finally I said, you know, you're like the eighth person to tell me this, is there something that like nobody told me? Like, it, does this library have a book budget? Like, did your book budget get cut? And no, no, no. They just they just assumed that because they were seeing flaws and in, in whatever the case may be, a little bit of customer service, a little bit of the collections, they assumed that the but the library was having these budget problem. cuts and their book budget had been cut. That's why they didn't have any of these books. Versus maybe just a couple of things that we could have tweaked to make things up a little bit better. So. It was a very interesting moment of like, I, I just thought, did I miss that part where your budget had just been slashed? But no, it wasn't the case. Just a quick question. Um, I know that our last um, strategic plan was a five-year plan. Yeah. And there's been discussion about possibly a two-year plan. Do we have a, uh, an idea here about how many year plan we're talking about at this point? 
has that been resolved or is that still up in the I year? think we talked about a five year plan. Yeah. yeah. We um, were debating a three year plan. Oh, three. Okay. And we decided with the five year because okay. of the space planning study that it would make sense to have mm -hmm. yeah. a good Next solid time. chunk of time that we are building this for mm -hmm. ahead of that. And if I can also add, add to that too, I do think you know we we will lay out some of the concerns that um, regardless if you take the plan into three years or five years, right? There should be some very major overarching themes. So the action items, maybe you check them, maybe you have three of the most amazing years, somebody comes in and gives you a $500 million endowment and you get everything done and triple your staff, awesome. Um, you'll still have overarching, you know, I think done correctly. Plan should account for that, right? Best case scenario as well. So you check everything off this list, here are those big overarching themes. Things like, you know, the great, the quiet, um, Designation and the AV department. What what are those big things going to look like in the next five years? That um, even if you check off all the action items, you're still going to have to address AV in five years. That type of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just I just do want to note uh, that while it's great to have a kind of a high level of appreciation in those community surveys for the library, you know I think if we do this well, then uh, we should actually be making some pretty significant changes over the course of five years and serving new populations that may not have, you know, been the common folks that yeah. respond to those community right. surveys. Yeah, and so we might see numbers go down uh, because us. folks respond, you yeah. know, differently when they see major changes. Um, but if we're reaching out to new communities and doing a better job of, of, of engaging those folks, um, and that, then we need to find ways of measuring our yeah. success um, that wouldn't show up in a, in a community survey like that. No, it doesn't have to be zero sum. I mean, you can serve other people and still continue to serve. I mean, that's I suppose the balance we're looking. Oh yeah, and, yeah. It's not necessarily like you're sacrificing something when you, no. you know, broaden your outreach. Right. I'm just saying that that measure need not reflect yep. whether or not we're making uh, mm -hmm. you know good progress on this particular strategic plan. Uh, uh, yeah. I have um, two things, like, and they're not for long enough, but the second one is by the time I mentioned the first, but in um, the going back to the training now, long range plan, which is interesting. It's really kind of a kind of a puff piece in some ways and a very broad kind of goals. It relates um, to what the town is trying to do, which um, I thought we might want to consider what how closely we want to relate the two because they are. Uh, in that plan, um, they've got their own goals, but then they say, well, this is what the town goals are, and, you know, mm -hmm. this particular thing of ours relates to number two and five and six of the town goals. So it's identifying each thing um, pretty specifically. Um, so I thought that was kind of one interesting thing about it, um, which um, the board of select, so excuse me, select board here in Needham is um, just finalizing their um, revised goals um, after sending them out for um, input. And so that should be available soon. And the other thing is, I thought it was interesting in uh, Framingham that they have goals, but they don't have action for each goal. They have an annual action plan, which things as the year comes up, which things are we going to attack next year? Right. Of all of this, I don't know if I thought that that was really a good thing. Um, uh, you know, you'd kind of like to have it all, you know, a little better laid out than that, I think, and particularly for if you need support. Um, mm -hmm. It's not very helpful to say, well, spur them on it. And next year we'll do A, B, and C, but it does leave you flexible and, you know, sort of agile, I suppose you'd say. So I don't know if that's, I've never heard of doing it that way, um, but the Needham last plan was very broad ranging and some things never even got addressed. Mm -hmm. um, we did do annual um, evaluations of where we stood on each of the things, but there were a lot. Um, and truthfully, some things really never would have been done um, that are important and probably we want to have it to the I think to, you know you brought up a good point. I so I haven't read for um, plan at all, but I do think you know the MBLC. You're not required to have a strategic plan. The only reason you would need to have one in theory is that um, to apply for any type of grants, you know, the state grants, um, which is why I had chosen at that time. I just we took a year off and didn't apply for any of those grants, and you know mm -hmm. I thought we 
time well spent on other things. Um, but then they do make you pull out those um, action plans. So I think if you, if, especially if you're going to start applying for grants, you have a strategic plan on a long range plan on file. And then by December, they want a yearly action plan on file in addition um, to kind of hold you a little bit, of, I mean, my words, hold you a little bit accountable. Um, but we can break it down a little bit more. That's what I did in one thing so that I could just pull that data for, from the fiscal year and have everything all set, um, ready to submit to them. And the other thing that I did them, you mean would be to the MDLC, sorry, the MDLC or the federal state. Only, plans. yeah, only if you are going to go after the grants, which I'm sure eventually you know you want to get some. I also divided it up and put a category of who in the library should really be taking the lead on that as well, which I found, you know. Again, I chose to do it because I wanted to hold my team very specifically accountable and have that published and available to everybody. I think that would be nice for us. Um, but it might not be the right fit for all of you. I think that'll be, you know, certainly you would want to talk about where you are with staffing right now. It wouldn't work right now in, in Waltham in particular. You know, we have a lot of vacancies that we're trying to fill. Um, so it would be kind of a moot point, I think, to. Um, I had to do the strategic plan this month. I leave that part out of it, but you guys might be ready for it. Well, so. so I think Rob has one. No, no, I have a comments. I was just going to comment that, that you know, first of all, only two of us on the board were part of the last strategic plan. Oh, fun. Okay. Right. Great. And, um, and also, the other thing is that the population has gained 3,000. Gained 3,000, and it's a much different population. They, they're in multi, you know, they're younger, yeah. and um, they're very comfortable, and uh, they, they're young and young and wealthy and comfortable. You know? <laughs> yeah. Okay, who else would like to go? Like, Rob hasn't spoken yet. So. Oh, real quickly, yeah. So, um, great to meet you, Kelly. Um, you know, as I'm sure you've heard, one of the interesting and exciting things that we have going on right now, or will have going on soon, is a space planning study. And I'm really interested to see how these two sort of simultaneous plans are going to dovetail and how we can leverage them. You know, I, I, I kind of imagine, you know, the strategic plan and forming the space plan. Um, but I was curious what your thoughts are on that. No, I agree 100%. I think you should you want to hear from the patrons, right, primarily before you make any major changes to the building or um, or the layout. So I think, you know, especially if you're going to devote all that, you know, all these resources to bring in uh, a space study, I love that. I would definitely do the strategic plan um, first. Although Kim also knows that I'm a big fan of um, trial and error. I've been known to move quite a few pieces of furniture, entire collections around by hand, myself, <laughs> um, with, with some very willing volunteers. Um, so that's something to think about too, right? Just get some ideas from the strategic plan, move a couple of shelves here or there, see if you like it, and then bring a space plan in, and, um, you know, an organization to come in and say, hey, don't tell me to put the children's in what we did, we tried it, we didn't like it, right? We know for sure this is not going to work. Right, that type of thing too. But definitely, I would do the strategic plan first and hear what the patrons say and look what the data says. You know, if it was something like Needham, in five years, every child in Needham is going to move to a different city. You would want to know that, right? You wouldn't want to. You don't want to build a four hundred million dollar children's room if all those kids are are aging out of Needham. You know, that's that's a gross yeah. exaggeration. Obviously, not the case, but. Any final uh, comments one, before one, we move? Yeah, one last okay. comment because, you know, I think. I might have at one point shared the Framingham plan among some other plans. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make clear that, that I shared it more as a model for the design <laughs> and, and the public facing mm -hmm. style of yeah, it as a document that helps us accomplish the goals better. Yeah. And I don't, don't even remember the substance yeah. specifically <laughs> of the plan, you know, in terms of whether I'm endorsing that the content of that plan so much as the, the notion the of of how it might yeah. be presented yeah. to the community. I felt that too. And yeah, some of the library, um, Nina's library just did the graphic Ash, novel. Yeah. Ashland just um, did the, I had sent that or added it to our shared folder. Ashland's plan is like a comic style. Uh, so if you did yeah. see it, you would yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought that was a very, I mean, that's a very clever way to pull out key points and get, especially, yeah. No younger, younger people, yeah. right? Yeah. It's very yeah. visual. Get someone to actually want. look at it. 
right. I'm going to actually look at it and yeah. see. I thought that was a very definitely clever. a branding perspective yeah. for that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Anything final before we move to our um, our discussion, our uh, Needham Library of the Future, which nothing further. And, and um, Kelly, you're welcome to stay where you are um, and just listen in. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So it's so this is our opportunity for the trustees to kind of, as elected representatives of the folks of Needham, um, to kind of get our thoughts and ideas to generate um, uh, some inspiration, some specifics. Um, and Earhart has been kind enough to use his skills to try to facilitate, but also the trick of participating too. We want to make yeah. sure that you get to uh, give your input along um, with the rest of us. So, uh, so I'm going to hand off to. Thank you, um, so uh, we asked uh, everyone on the trustees to do some pre-work, um, and that was looking at some of the readings. Um, we asked you to look at some specific readings, and, as well as to look at the other stuff that might be in the folder, um, and to respond to a set of prompts, um, which we're kind of going to do in turn right now. So we're just going to kind of go around the room um, and each share something with regard to the, the, the work we did ahead of time um, in response to these prompts. Um, and I think Robin Jay, you're going to help take some more detailed notes on this. Yeah. Um, I thought that Kay overstated my volunteerism because when she asked about to ask me or Rob about taking notes, I said under no circumstances do I volunteer to take the notes. I offered to help Rob afterwards collect the notes. That's right, and also I suggested that each of us might condense, you know, a few bullet points to send over to Rob and Jay so that I'll have them. Um, and we'll have this on YouTube, so yeah. yes, that's right. Yeah, right. That's true. That's true. We could go back to the transcript as well. Um, but it's nice to just kind of consolidate some of these things. So the idea is, um, in each response to each of these prompts, we're each going to share kind of what we started out by pulling out and thinking about in each of these. We'll go one by one through the prompts and one by one through the folks. Um, if you hear something that you want clarified, feel free to speak up and ask that person for clarification. But I don't think we should be debating any of these points right, right now. It's right. just like, are they valuable? Is that something that's, that is yeah. really appropriate? That's, that's um, important, yeah. We just want to kind of get all these ideas out there. If things come to you after you've spoken on one of these um, things, like you've shared all of the priorities that you hope to achieve, and, and then you had some more that you wrote down, feel free to write those down. And then we'll ask at the end after we go around if anyone had some new ones that came to mind since we started talking. Okay. That way we kind of keep track of where we're at and everybody gets to share. Does that work? Right. Yeah. All right, great. So the first prompt that we had in response to um, the readings that folks could look at, whether they were other folks, other um, library strategic plans, or some of the articles that we're looking at about the future of libraries, was to ask folks, you know, choose a state, ask trustees here, choose a statement or passage from one of the articles or documents um, that you really like and explain why you selected it. So this is here just to kind of get our heads thinking about some of the future of library ideas. Um, and so I'll start by just kind of like modeling um, this. So one thing that I pulled out was we had this article from the, the National Endowment of the Humanities, uh, which is a feature piece by Jennifer Howard. Um, and they looked at, um, uh, you know, they did some journalistic work at a couple of different libraries. And they talked to uh, this one person who's the library director um, in LA County. Um, and they talked about how um, this library director's, their strategy was to improve library access, including putting in place a program called iCount which provided tools and training for supervisors and staff on how to recognize inherent biases in their programs and services. And I thought that was really compelling. So they had an entire like professional development approach to thinking about how do we actually look at these issues of bias so that we're making sure that we're reaching out to a lot of different patrons, um, not just saying that our programs and services should be as they are, um, but you know, as we're doing them, let's actually have a critical eye on these things and have the staff thinking about that as they're working through that. I thought that was a great example of a way to think about this question that's been in our previous strategic plan is probably going to be something going forward. Um, and so I wanted to pull that out and share that. Jay, do you want to kick us off going around? Sure. So, uh, Thanks all for sharing, you know, all the links and I'm sure we all spent more time perhaps than we anticipated uh, reviewing all this. And I had mentioned the, 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 the Palfrey book, uh, which I had read before I started getting connected with the library. And I thought it was interesting and, and thought provoking, even if I didn't, not everything fits 
you know, us. Uh, so I suppose in taking out among those, the, the, the one line I took, which is I thought something that, that for me guides our effort is, is, is one of the conclusions that, that John came up with. Uh, I think he has sort of 10 recommendations at the end. And, and one of them included that, you know, to the extent that we're looking to redefine, you know, or, or, or reframe what it is, the basis of this redefinition must be demand driven, firmly grounded in what people and communities need from libraries today and in the future, and not in the nostalgia for how things may or may not have really been in the past. And I'm as nostalgic as anybody. Uh, and, 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 and then it goes on in the process of redefining libraries, which we must account for both the physical and the digital. And I think that 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 to some extent gets to the heart of of how we're going to, you know, to plot our way forward. Please, I'm going to go around to um, Carol. Yeah. Go around. Or, I'm sorry, you're going to miss all of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Rob, go. <laughs> assert his authority. <laughs> Carol, would you like to share? Sure. Um, Actually, on your point, I thought it was interesting that, uh, uh, that the author's point properly was that things more and more are created digital and become physical. They don't start physical and then get digitized, which is, you know, not the way it's been. Um, the, the thing that I kind of pulled out of, among many, it could have been, but um, was a comment by this uh, uh, Bengali uh, librarian. Uh, article the library change in role and services in 21st century information societies um, we used to live in a world in which there wasn't enough information information was currency now we're in a world where there's too much information there's information absolutely everywhere so instead of sending a library out into the desert to come back with one rock you need from the desert it's now a matter of sending librarians into a jungle to come back with the one tree and the one leaf in the jungle that you probably couldn't get, you know, on your own. So that, I thought that was, you know, a good point and really the value, the reference department actually, and, and helping to sort things out to find, you know, accurate current information yeah. that they need. Yeah, that role is more difficult and <laughs> profoundly needed. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Tom. Do you, Tom, do you have something to share with us from the from anything you read ahead of the meeting? No. Okay. Thank you. Rob? I just wanted to think of start the life of the future. And we had our 100th anniversary of the mission before. And we had the line of trustees wrote three things in the newspaper. One was the history of the library, the library today. One was the library of the future. And I was one, as the youngest trustee, I wrote the library of the future. And uh, I based it upon um, the looking backwards, 1888, about 1988. And I based it on that. I, so I just said, we have no idea what's going to be like. And my, my comment was that it might not even be a physical building. <laughs> it might be a chip in our head. No way to know what's going to happen in 100 years. That was not going to happen in the next 100 years. Uh, but I do think that we really have to think that what we have now is not going to look like anything like this in the future. We have to, we have to prepare for it. Yeah. That's from the that's from the 77 year old. <laughs> <laughs> I like the self-reference. <laughs> uh, so we got that article. Yeah. Yes. It's in the newspaper. Oh, wait a second. It's got smart guys. No, okay. Yeah. Rob. I'm sure it's an eye reference. Um, so I um, I chose a couple of quotes from Eric Feinberg's article from the Times. There are a couple of articles we did that were in there. Yeah. Um, the title of the article was To Restore Civil Society, Start with the Library. And I think, you know, these quotes kind of summed up what got me really interested in working with the library and, and why I think it's so important. Um, 
says, libraries are an example of what I call social infrastructure. The physical spaces are the organizations that shape the way people interact. Libraries are the kind of places where people with different backgrounds, passions, and interests can take part in a living democratic culture. They're the kinds of places where the public, private, and philanthropic sectors can work together to reach for something higher than the bottom line. Um, so I think that's incredibly important, not as a specific goal, but as something that kind of um, informs what we're doing and what we're, what, what we're trying to achieve, um, both in the next five years and on a longer time scale. Um, you know, there are fewer and fewer spaces where everybody from our community gets together. Uh, there are so many choices, you know, if, if you want to go to a coffee shop and go to Dunn's or Starbucks or French Press, and we always self-select when we go to these places, and we end up meeting far fewer people who are really different than us. Um, and libraries are a place, one of the few remaining places where everybody, well, not everybody, but most people come, um, there are no barriers to entry, and I think that that's incredibly important for our community for having a sense of place. Um, and for fostering, again, as, as Mr. Feinberg said, a democratic culture. It's sort of a democratizer of information. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, for me, I, I really, the, the one, there's one phrase that really grabbed me, of, of the article from Jennifer Howarby from the NEH, <clears throat> and it was Beyond Books. Because that's actually in line with what Rob, uh, Rob just said about when I joined the, the trustee, my my tagline, you know, I was I was had a, a contender, so. <laughs> and to me it was like I envisioned the library to be a uh, community builder. It was in I kept hearing so we love books, I love books, we are all about books, we have all the books, <laughs> and to me it's like it's not only about books. <laughs> So this uh, article really grabbed me and it talks about actually, and, and so that's level one. Then, then if you keep uh, digging deeper, it talks about, you know, uh, we are not, the, this is the uh, quote, we are not the police, we're not social workers, uh, says the director of Palo Alto City Library. We do provide an important threat to our community for its being and health. They're talking about uh, the different uh, roles that the variants play. So it's not only community building, but it's also assisting, you know, the article was just assisting an elderly person who's just having a seizure and, and all these other um, activities. And so to me, the beyond books has many meanings. It's not only uh, expanding the, the, the meaning of information, which could be entertainment, it could be um, just, you know, it could be educational, but it could be also entertaining. So that's that's a part of the books, but also the different roles that the librarians play. And, and that makes me think, and I want to make sure that we bring it into the conversation about also holding a space of priority for the staff and, and making sure that they're, they're resor well resourced, uh, not necessarily only with training, but also benefits, you know, the salaries, everything. It's just in the past about that activist in the town. And we need to make sure that if we want to have the ultimate service, customer service, and, and be out there and have, you know, the five stars and so forth, mm -hmm. that we have, we're not just pushing down on the staff, but we are actually arming them with what they need to, so they can go beyond them. No, so that, that's kind of mm -hmm. how, how I see it. So, what was the name of that article? Oh, uh, it's the um, it's the uh, the National Endowment for Humanities. It's one of oh, the, no. yeah, 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 thank you, Jennifer Howard. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, so, um, and all of you have touched on a little bit of you know <laughs> what I uh have here, but um, I chose a quote from the 21st Century Library for learning. The Learning Commons at Utopia, um, which is a little bit 2015, but I thought it, it captured what I think is sort of the biggest issue. And it says, today, when every person has the potential to carry a global library on the device in his or her, or her pocket, the role of the physical library may become even more important, not just as a place to house resources, but one in which to create meaning from them. 
The libraries of the 21st century provide a welcoming common space that encourages exploration, creation, collaboration, and brings together the broader community. The best of the physical and the digital world. So that basically addresses what I really see as the, the biggest issue is the question in many people's mind is not just, oh, the library is about, only about books, but you can get everything online. So why do we still have a library? And that's, I think, the, the big question we need to address. Um, so we're going to turn to the second prompt, which was asking, what priorities do you hope to see the strategic plan address? Um, so in this case, I think uh, I think we should just share all the priorities that we have. Um, and, um, and it's OK to add the priorities on that might be phrased slightly different um, from somebody else. Um, and uh, that way we're kind of, we, we don't feel like, you know, if we hear something that sounds like ours, we don't feel the need to share it. I want to make sure that we capture the fact that maybe we have the same priority or similar priorities in the list that we've uh, compiled ahead of time. Does that sound good? Um, so um, I came up with four that I wanted to, to, to share. Um, one was um, thinking about multimodal access to resources. Um, so, you know, folks might prefer to, to read on paper or read on a screen or listen um, to, to a resource. Um, and thinking about how we're being accessible um, across the materials that traditional libraries provide. Um, since I think that there's, there's now an ability for us um, to be providing uh, that kind of resource or, or as the same material in many different forms. Um, I wanted us to think deeply about this question of, of the team room and how we're serving the teams um, and, and how we expand the space and their ability to, um, uh, to use the library. Um, I want to make sure, uh, or I hope that we, uh, um, that we develop uh, deeper relationships with the rest of, of um, Needham and, and Needham Civil Society. Um, and, and, the other, and the last thing I, I, I wrote was, um, I would hope that, that we create a plan that's flexible um, to adapt to kind of um, the changing um, needs um, that our community has over the course of, of five years so that we can be responsive to things that come up um, and we don't feel like uh, we're kind of fixed into something uh, that may no longer be as important, uh, you know, in three or four years time. Yeah. Okay. Um, so these are just my notes <laughs> to this. And the first one, I'm not sure if, it, if it's what the priorities to address, but I feel like we have to understand what's the process for determining the proper balance between the physical and digital resources. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that happens. I made a note that we should, you know, reimagine the best use of the library space. Uh, if, if, you know, if we were starting from scratch, what would, what would, what would we be looking to do? Um, I raised the question about understanding our staffing needs and whether, whether we're where we want to be or whether we should be, you know, reconsidering that in terms of full-time versus part-time. Uh, and a couple more notes, uh, one of which uh, you've mentioned Earhart, you know, outreach to broaden our impact and deepen our connection with the community. Um, and finally, you know, you know, a, a notion about fundraising of what other, uh, what are the financial opportunities that perhaps we've not, you know, fully taken advantage of. To me? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can always, How much you got, Tom? <laughs> you can always ask, you can ask for clarification, but I think we'll keep going in the in the circle uh, for order. Carol, do you want to go? Ahead? Um, yeah. As I mentioned before, what Framingham had done is related their uh, plan to the town goals, uh, and um, we have definitely been an upward in a, as a positive trajectory uh, in our relationship with. The select board with the finance committee. Um, you know, it's had some fresh air, some, you know, lots of new um, um, people out on the board, which is, you know, new ideas and new energy. So, anyway, um, 
I, I would like to see that continue. And it seemed to me that we should at least consider whether it's their goals or our goals. They may not be exactly the same. We may have additional things that just didn't show up there. But in general, I think that what we want, we would want for the reasons that are the same reasons that you know they have certain goals as they select their places. Um, we've also not had, you know, we've had some funny moments at town meeting asking for money. <laughs> and uh, we would like to be sure we are um, communicating with you know the uh, town meeting members and so in general other departments of the town and including town manager and we are meeting and i think that that would be helpful and it really kind of gives us the feeling that we're all going the same direction more or less even though we never know things um, and um so that's one thing um you know, I this question of who who are the people who are not our patrons is, I think, a really important one. And so, um, you know, I think we need to do more outreach. We need more, um, not only communicating what we already have, but you know, getting input um, and thinking about like who are these constituencies that we are really not seeing here that maybe would be would like it if we did what they needed and of course maybe they don't even know what we have already so that seems like a really important um, thing to see how we could address that question about who our community really is yeah um, i i have to admit that i yes I did get to do thought, thought, thought. I've done nothing. I'm completely surprised, and I yeah. and I'm just trying to get it on here, and I can't find it, and my things are screwing up. So I okay. I got I, I, I got the did get you the email, but um, I hope that you but my my yeah. phone gets okay. I hear my, you. My iPad is super sensitive. Oh. <laughs> Well, Tom, the, the prompt is just to think about, you know, what are the priorities that you hope that the strategic plan addresses? And so if you have any that come to mind right now, you know, we'd love to hear them. All right, I appreciate that. I couldn't have done it because I'm a school teacher. I haven't done that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, honestly. Uh, Rob? Sure. Let's switch documents here. Great. So I have three priorities that came to mind um, when I was thinking about this. Um, the first, and I touched on this earlier, is the physical space. Um, you know, how the current library space works in relation to both current and anticipated future library uses. Um, again, I just think that's going to be really important because, you know, we're going to be having a space planning study, and anything that comes out of that, we'll really want to have a basis to explain why the community needs this. Um, why this is important and why this is worth an expenditure in the future. Um, so this is kind of an important first step in that process, if there is an Um The second item is outreach. I think a lot of other folks touched on this. Um, how the library can coordinate with other town departments. I know that it currently does, but I think this is something that there's lots of opportunity to expand. Um, you know, to cross market library services, also to further civic engagement in town. Uh, you know, we lost, really lost our town newspaper uh, the past year or so. So a lot of folks may not be getting as much information as they used to about you know, elections and things that are happening in town government. Uh, as a source of information, you know, we might have a role to play there. Um, and also how the library can reach out to groups that currently use the library, perhaps less than others. Um, I think identifying and quantifying those groups would be incredibly difficult, but hopefully in the course of um, collecting the surveys and information, we'll be able to find some trends uh, about who is and isn't using the library to its full potential. And my third, third item is communications. Um, you know, I think we've made some really good progress on communications since I first joined the board, uh, which is back in 2019. Uh, but I think this is an area where we can continue to improve. Um, it's incredibly important, again, to reach out to folks in town, uh, both 
heavy library users, folks who maybe don't use the library as much. Um, I know that you know we have email updates, website updates, social media posts, but we should always be examining potential new methods to help increase awareness and get the word out. Uh, I'm sure that some of those have not even been invented yet, but mm -hmm. this is something that we should definitely stay on top of. And those are my other questions. Uh, in the end, I have um, trying to see how many there are a bunch, but let's see. <laughs> um, I'll start with the operational piece. It's um, the strategic plan, to, in my view, needs to uh, at least have one goal at evaluating the, the processes, internal processes that make things run. And typically, the, the library, I think, has really done a great job in being at um, operationally efficient. Yeah, there are some gaps, and now with the new director and so on, there, I'm sure I think that you may be on the top of this, and uh, looking at what can be done better, faster, different, and then, and then maybe cheaper, I don't know. But there are some operational related uh, goals there that can be measured, that can be can give us the foundation for us to build, uh, to improve, and also to resource, better resource staffing and, and the needs of how to run the library. So that's one goal. The other one is about uh, branding and influence. Uh, despite the wonderful 95% satisfaction that I mentioned earlier, and I didn't mention it because I was proud of it, I was mentioning it because I really am curious about it. Um, the library has, uh, enjoy depending on who is who is the audience we are our, our reputation is very much about providing a service that we are not influential and as influential in the community as we could be you know we are the town budget we would put i think we're under two percent of the town budget mm -hmm. so there is there is um and i think carol mentioned that there is a, a it's a been an uh, improving relationship with the different town uh, organizations, right? So there is there needs to be some kind of an intentional effort for us to increase our level of influence. I don't know how. I'm just saying we need to do this, and and then branding along the way. So uh, partnerships, as I think uh, Rob mentioned, partnerships being more uh, visible become more visible. Some kind of visibility strategy. Um, so that's that's another one. And the other, the third one is the community outreach piece that several have mentioned. Um, I want to look at it from a different perspective. What if the folks that don't approach the library are not going to approach the library for X reasons? Okay. So is does that mean that our goal for community outreach is finite? How do we make it infinite? Do we have to be, uh, provide virtual services so people from other towns enjoy it? Or is it our goal only need it? Now, I'm wondering. I don't know if, what, what is the answer of how, what is the, the consensus going to be. But for cultural reasons, for logistical reasons, for caregiving reasons, some folks are never going to make it to the library. So, so are, we, uh, are we aiming at a goal that may be you know, how do we make this goal happen in a way that we can go beyond just the, the physical number of people in the library or accessing books or something? I don't know, but I'm thinking for I'm going back to COVID times when uh, we did a couple of book clubs that were all virtual and people from all over the world joined. I mean, mm -hmm. is that is that how we are trying to now reach, right? Or, or is it mostly physical? So, so I'm just curious about how to go about that, that one goal. Yeah. All right, um, that's it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so my first, uh, my four, my first one is something that every single person here has touched on, outreach, um, and how do we communicate with the larger community uh, about all the wonderful, interesting, and meaningful things happening here. And I have a very specific action item attached to that, which is we have an amazingly visible piece of real estate here. And I think that we need to think about how to use that visibility, the, the front of our property 
for to be communicate with the people who everybody's driving by this place every single day or walking by some kind of attractive electronic board and saying it's a very specific action item to to help communicate about programs about resources about all the you know uh, the things that are, are happening here I have to get big and visible um, and make it you know so it looks good too not junky um, <laughs> so that's it's like a digital mural yeah, yeah. Uh, I want to see <laughs> the flashing lights. That's what it's called, a question. Yeah. Uh, is it like the one in the um, where the transfer station is that it has all the announcements? Is that what you I don't have one in specific. I really don't like Maybe. the other ones that are in town. I think maybe we could get look around okay. to get something. That's some something that I have to like, that is we could use. Um, or use that front row seat we've got out there. Um, so um, second one is to reach across boundaries to create a diverse and inclusive environment in a way that unites rather than divides the community to um, provide ongoing learning opportunities around equity and inclusion that creates a safe space for people to learn and grow um, to seek to unite rather than divide. Um, so I would want that to be a kind of a, a warm and welcoming uh, discussion uh, that we could all participate in. Um, and a lot of that is happening now already. And I know it's been wonderful about that sort of thing. And I, you know, I think we want to keep that, that positive tone. Um, uh, third was the, oh, in this world of disinformation and misinformation, let people know how, how the library can evolve to become a home base for truth and accuracy of information. Um, one suggestion is to schedule learning sessions. Uh, or uh, create handouts to provide tips about how people can discern between misinformation and online and, and uh, real vetted information um, online and in social media. So address the misinformation problem in our world today. Um, and lastly, this is my, my heartfelt thing to encourage the reading of great literature, both classic and contemporary to make sure we don't lose that in um, our uh, you know, as we move forward, um, the foundational goal of encouraging reading should not be lost in our efforts to broaden the library's mission. Can I add one after that? Yes, that's right. Yes, anyone have anything? <laughs> yeah, actually, that had okay, reminded me. So I think there is a need to also uh, reflect in our literature and our books or any type of information that we have the communities that are in. in that we want to start. So this, you know, it reminds me of the curriculum discussions in schools, you know, when it's really skewed to certain topics, certain groups as opposed to others. So how do we become more, you know, expansive and not exclusive? That's the idea is to be expansive and not exclusive. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. In how we describe ourselves or in what we're actually doing, which I think are you talking about partly how we present ourselves? Or? No, no, talking about the materials. So, like, you know, like, for example, in history classes, there is usually, you know, or English class, there's only certain authors that are, so we want to have a variety of authors. That's just more important. Did anyone else have anything to add to the priority that came to them while we were going around? All right, our final prompt. Um, was proposing uh, two or three questions uh, that we don't already know the answers to uh, that you would like to have the strategic plan answer in some way. Um, so I had a few questions. One was, um, I'd like to know, uh, should we uh, revisit, revise, recommit to the library's vision, mission, and values in order to achieve this uh, strategic plan that we end up putting forward? Mm -hmm. um, uh, I'd like uh, Another question I had was, um, let, can we explore what does it mean for uh, the Need of Free Public Library to be our town social infrastructure, right? So like, ask that question through the process um, as we use this kind of idea of social infrastructure from compared country. Um, who are the key subpopulations of library users that are growing and who uh, and, and which are linchpins for wider community engagement? So how do we identify those, those subpopulations? And then, um, how will we hold ourselves accountable um, once we put this together? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's great. Um, might be a little repetitive. 
So I, I, I wrote four very simple questions. Uh, first, who do we serve? And I think there's two aspects to that. The first is your demographics of the town. And then the second is who are we actually serving? And there's something to be learned from, from determining what, you know, which, which part of the demographics are not the part of, of who we're serving. Um, what do they want? And then not only that, but what do we think they need? Uh, and then, you know, how do we make that happen? So vague, yes. four questions. Four questions. Well, I was gonna say core questions. Oh, I thought, core I thought it was the four, Manish, four questions. <laughs> Well, um, I, I just would like us to make sure we're asking how specifically, specifically do as an action, do we connect with um, potential patients, mm -hmm. uh, current patients, um, the residents, maybe uh, one action students, maybe another action, maybe employees of local businesses, another action, uh, quite different. Uh, and. Uh, so that, that was one question I had. The other question was just um, my curiosity about how much Needham patrons actually browse in the stacks. Um, because it was the statistic from Wellesley when they did an observational um, uh, survey that um, there was little use of the stacks for browsing. You know, people said, what do you do at the library? You know, they saw observed what people were doing at the library. And, Maybe three percent uh, that that youth was that during whatever period they were studying was um, actually browsing, and oh my gosh, it's such fun to browse at the library. Thinking what a loss that people don't browse anymore. And I was thinking if they don't browse and need them, then we should be inquiring about why they don't browse. Is it because uh, they don't know how to browse? Because they don't know how it's set up? Is it because they don't have time? Because they think that they can just look it up? Uh, online and they can identify what book or whatever resource they need without ever having to walk around and kind of look to see what else is on, next to it on the shelf. Um, but I mean, it's kind of, I, I was kind of stunned by that um, number. I mean, it was a short observational study and maybe it didn't mean anything. This is well, so not neither. One, but, one of the writers referred to the serendipity of discovery that mm -hmm. comes from browsing where you, yeah. you don't know what you're going to find. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that Wellesley thing, but if I could interject really quickly, because this is like a fundamental um, issue with browsing and building your collections. But I, I feel like something is wrong with that. I'm not questioning you, but what they're sharing anecdotally, because any good popular lending material library should have 90% of their circulation should be browsing. So that actually is a very weird, like I'm wondering okay. where they're even thinking they got that number. I wasn't sure if I was the last of the browsers. <laughs> no, because like literally we, I feel like you in particular you could speak to this word, building circulation collections. You wanna have the right number of like express copies or do you have express copies here? Okay, so that we'll address that, but like, you know, having copies so that you always have the latest and greatest on the shelf. So when patron comes in, a patron comes in, they might not even know that they want that book, but there it is, or they've heard of it. Um, and then we, you also talk about the thing of this idea of what a new book is and how long a new a book stays new is a very interesting theory. It has a lot to do with your population and how much money your patrons have, right? So. A new book is really new for probably two years. Like I, people are still talking about where the crawdad sings and mm -hmm. it's now a movie. Like that's been out for a while, but like you really have to, I'm, re, I'm gonna, I made a note. I'm gonna look at that. I'm yeah, fascinated at what on earth they could possibly be talking about. Yeah. Cause Wellesley's in top 10, aren't they? Uh, yeah, top 15? That's, I'm, we're gonna, I'm like, I'm yeah, it's a really, I, it's like it's literally, a really I, to sad me, statistic if it's, you know, really, Yes, and I would be shocked. And we can can we pull the numbers for you. I'm very, you know, <laughs> I can too, but we have to ask me how. But uh, that's well, a very interesting. Yeah. You know, and the other thing is, I mean, this really isn't under our control, um, but this Minuteman decision to auto renew things mm -hmm. means that stuff isn't on the shelf that maybe should be back on the shelf. It just auto renews, and so it sits in somebody's house and. So anybody who's browsing will not see that, uh, or maybe you need more copies mm. because it's still out and nobody's reading it or using it. And 
it seemed like a really, at the time it struck me as a really poor decision. And I don't know if that's, um, you know, can be revisited or it's just too darn late and to even go back yeah. on that, but uh, never too late. Yeah. Did you have any other questions? No, about the... no I think those are my two that I had. Over there. Thank you. Uh, coming back around. I have two points. I think the 90% browsing is, is not me at all. I browse through the website. Mm -hmm. That's the way I browse. I'm not, I'm not going to go down over. I'll go down to, I'm going to, I'm going to get a bowl of baseball. I'll go down to 736. <laughs> I, I, I don't think, I, I'm amazed 90% of browsers. I have, obviously, I, and I didn't cite that source, but it is, it's a pretty well known, I mean, even anecdotally, that is really where you are. I mean, the numbers will check out. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, how many books, how many holds you fill? Um, like, our hold shelf would be much, much larger if no one was browsing. Right, right. Right. That represents a relatively small proportion of the books that are being loaned. Yes, yes, yes. And it makes sense if you think about it. Like if you come in to get a specific book and it's on the shelf and you go over there, particularly for nonfiction, you might pick up, I mean, the books are free. So you might get the book next to it as well, too. I mean, fiction, too, right? But if you were like looking yeah. for a book on baseball, you might see another one that piques your interest after you find them on the shelf. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And the one thing about always having a book from Mrs. MacGyver was. Very popular. She said it's terrible. The best selling book was Love Story. <laughs> so she wanted to make sure that we had to, that somebody, when somebody came in and they wanted Love Story, they get it. Yeah. And so she did an experiment. We used to rent books from McNaughton. Did she go out and buy books? You know? and, uh, I think we had something like uh, 300 copies. <laughs> no. Never she dies in every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to put like spoiler a, alert. Well, sorry, I know, right? You have to spoil the story. Well, we should probably move on. Rob, do you have a? Uh, do you have some questions? Uh, I do have two questions. They're they're fairly specific, but these would be great to answer during this process. Uh, the first is what services do need of residents wish the library provided that does not currently provide? Um, the second is, are there any skill sets that library staff members currently have that are underutilized? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the, the, uh, one of your questions sounds like one of my questions, which is, um, what, are the, what are the strengths that the library has? I don't think I'm clear in the key strength of maybe three, five that we can leverage. That's the option for it. Um, the other is uh, what metrics do we need to monitor progress? I know we have some metrics in circulation, but I don't know if there are some specific metrics we are missing that we are not even considering. And the third one is how do uh, how do how do we become better at communicating our value? And this mm -hmm. goes especially um, especially to uh, the point of influence and branding, so that um, and it's more of a um, kind of a seeding question because when we go back to the to town meeting for asking for money for space for space planning and any other, I mean the chair story comes to mind. <laughs> um, how do we get to the point that, oh, the library is asking? Sure. Let's Give it to them. Yeah, <laughs> they are going to make good use of it. Great. And my, I have three questions. One is addressing once again the outreach question that everybody has brought up. Um, I have this. How can we create a specific actionable communications plan to more robustly and regularly alert? The community about the library program services. Let's create a specific plan. Um, second one is in today's world of misinformation, how can the Needham Library increase its profile as a home base for truth and accuracy of information? Um, a place where the members of the public know they can begin their search for verifiable facts and evidence based information. 
And lastly, uh, what steps can we take to shape and guide our equity and inclusion efforts to generate a positive sense of connection community among people of diverse backgrounds? Okay. Wow. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, we have the rest of the meeting. We still got to more meeting. Um, does anyone have any more questions that came up um, as we were going around? You just, no, not, not about, uh, about the process. We're no, copy, right? the, no, just the, the questions about that we hope this is should be planned no. by answer. I certainly have kind of like an abstracted question based on what you were talking about, uh, Carol, um, which is which is about um, kind of what skills do patrons need um, to uh, to best kind of navigate our collections and make the most of the library, you know, and how does um, you know, what, what gap exists between their current behaviors um, and what would actually be the behaviors that would allow them to get the most out and, and then what would that look like for us to, to close that gap either through literacy or, or redesign. Or orientation. Yeah, or... exactly. Hmm. Uh, so I just wanted to add that on top of that great um, provocative idea. If people were really only browsing, like three percent of their mm -hmm. the library were spending way too much real estate on uh, the stacks, right. <laughs> on books, huh? books. <laughs> well, you know, think about what the law library you know, lost to where they had collapsible, you know, so it didn't take up so much room all the time. You open the one you, you need to get the particular thing that you know you want. Not bad. That is an interesting question. The whole browsing question. Well, thank you all for engaging. <laughs> I've never browsed a law library. <laughs> I have. <laughs> thank you for all engaging in that uh, kind of brainstorming and sharing uh, activity. And, and Aaron, thank, thank you, you for Aaron. creating yeah, that um, very uh, usable uh, format for us to have this discussion. Yeah. That, was, that was immense help. Um, and I really encourage everybody to jot down their bullet points and get it, get them to Rob and Jay, so that they don't have to like, you know, kind of reinvent the uh, wheel. Um, I'm sending to Rob right now my my answers. I did take notes, so if, if you've got them in a word file or an email or anything digital, send them over. If it's on a piece of paper, I took notes, so I have distilled it um, according to what I heard. Okay. Thanks, Rob. So the next item um, is uh, the selection of the public uh, PPBC. Oh, yes. So um, <laughs> the public building, the permanent public permanent buildings. Public building. I don't know. One day we'll get it. Um, they are going to be running the process for the space planning study. They have a group called a user group. And they need two representatives to be voted upon from this body to participate along the space planning study process. Um, so I think Kate and everyone and Dave and Katie spoke to that a little bit in July. But does anyone need more river pressure on what that means? Uh, I guess um, we had the same thing we built the slide. Yep. The PBC, the and that time, the other group was one trustee and the director. Yes. That's what the hope probably from the town would be, but the body decides. So. That's what we decide. Yes. So I guess, I mean, this is if somebody has interest in space planning, which is a very uh, you know, engaging topic, especially as, as we're talking about strategic plan, now's the time to um, step forward and have some say in how our library space is employed, right? How long is that communication? Um, it is a year long thing and it'll kick off, mainly kick off in January next year. Do you know the volume of meetings is? I'm sorry? Do you know the volume of meetings is? like? I believe it's monthly. Monthly, okay. Not what time it is? It, it varies on the project. Sorry? Is it during regular business hours? Oh, sorry, Tom. It, it varies upon the project. Right. I have been told it's a year long process and that will probably be monthly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know during what hours. I think okay. it would depend on what the group. They, they usually meet Monday night. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'll put myself forward. Um, uh, this is something I'm interested in. Uh, cool. I'd be happy to work with someone. Great. Okay. Great. 
And how are we feeling like the director plus our one um, trustee representative is the good, is the right time? Yes. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Tom, okay. Well, then I guess we have a uh, agreement then. Sounds and like it. We need to vote. Need to vote. Okay. Yes. In that case, I move. I move. I move. Representative. Earhart Grace. Earhart from the trustees and the director can vote. Second. 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 Second the notes that Jay and Robert, uh -huh. I was just going to put a very general overview in the minutes because you're going to look at the specifics of the documents you're sharing, correct? Yes, we're, we're, we're having... not going to expect yeah. you to have captured. That's one of the reasons that <laughs> well, I need notes for like to, to sort of subheadings that Earhart had. Um, yeah, some just generic sub subheadings, but that's that's fine. I'm going to say that. that was correct. Thank you, Kate, for that. Um, and then, okay, so then we're on to um, old business. Right? Did you miss anything? Okay. So, is there anything new on the strategic planning process update? Update. So, we kind of addressed that by with Kelly's introduction. We had a trustees meeting at which we discussed our thoughts about the strategic plan. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, is there anything that the uh, working group needs to convey that has not been yet um, talked about? Or is there anything about the schedule of you know, what's going to happen and when? I think we're Kelly and I will need to discuss that okay. and then it'll go along with the proposal that um, that you saw that timeline for yes. that'll kind of kick off. It'll probably adjust just slightly based on when we're actually getting started now. But yeah. Okay. So we should we'll that, be refer to that timeline. Yes. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. That sounds good. Probably have more updates next month. More next month. Uh, and so uh, equity and inclusion resolution, I saw there's some things in Kim's report on that, and also anyone else has something to report. Um, I was just going to suggest, and I, it probably would happen anyway, I don't know whether Dimitri or who would be in charge of this, but um, that when this uh, community-wide league happens and there are these events, whether there are discussions or there's the author talk, um, book clubs or you know, virtual meeting with the author in October that um, we do keep statistics of how many people uh, were involved in each book group and uh, how many people attended the virtual. Um, uh, and then that could go, would go into the, you know, November's report on October for DEI under programs for patrons. So we have an author talk, but uh, for the friends, is that what we're referring to or what? Uh, no, 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 I'm it's talking different. about um, thank you, Mr. Nixon. The last one. Oh, uh, okay. I just uh, yes, Oh, is, I see, yes. That okay. is a, that, that community. So it's a community. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Community. yeah, but it's in conjunction with a few other libraries in the area. So mm -hmm. I believe some of the events probably will have more than just our patron base. Dimitri, does that sound? Yes, that, that's several Miniman libraries are involved with this. So it's not just us, it's several other towns. I can't think of all of them off the top of my head. Okay. But, it's 20 plus towns and different Yeah, groups. yeah. I think so Mina Jane, who's the director of National, had a big hand in organizing that. So yeah, it's pretty widespread. Sorry, I missed the question. No, it's just suggesting that when those uh, events come up in October next month, that we keep good track uh, as much as possible and you know okay. include okay. them under patron mm -hmm. you know, cool. programs for patrons. So there seems to still be a little bit of a mishmash of what's for our staff and what's for patrons. Um, yeah, that would definitely be for patrons. I mean, so yeah. do you want them pulled out that way, even if it's not our event specifically, like we're working in conjunction with question. 20 other libraries? Or... Good question. I mean, if there are book groups, well, you know, then I would okay. say yes. Okay, so things that are more specific. Okay. Yes. And, and, no. So to, uh, that, I think that particular event intersects. It's staff driven, but it also covers our equity and inclusion resolution. Uh, the book club, the night book 
Club is running also is having a discussion on the same book, Needham Connect, which is the equity and inclusion book club, is also running. So we can give counts from those two groups. Yeah. But the main event is on uh, October 6th when it's with the connection, the virtual session with the author with right. all the 20 plus right. libraries. Yeah, that's so that's the, I think that's one. But the local uh, discussions can be, I'm sure they yeah. be, will be reporting that. So it's a little bit of a, it intercepts that event, intercepts different different initiatives in, the, in our library. So that's why it's a little bit. And as an initiative for now planning this thing, we don't need them involved. It certainly is a staff progress thing to, you know, to be listed that way. Um, but when it actually happens, then we have right, right. the patron uh, number. So is this correct? There's going to be two local book group discussions, and yes. then there's the larger yeah. multi-library event on October 6th. Yeah. Um, if I, I don't know whose turn is for the inclusion, the um, October 3rd is the one for the Vita Connects, which is the DEI. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll send the link around if anybody's interested. Uh, October 6th is with the author, and then I believe it's October 17th when the Night Book Club is also oh, hosting that. Yeah. So, uh, and there are books out there, they're free, you can grab them. Okay. Uh, so, you don't have to check them out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the other thing that the uh, Monday Book Club oh, is, is, is actually reading a book. So three book groups, afternoon and evening. Before. No, not afternoon. The afternoon is not the the, the the book group is not a month. That that's the okay. Oh, okay. So that's the group. So double So Demetri and I will note that separately. Those two systems. Okay. Any no, further on equity it, inclusion resolution? Very good book. <laughs> Is it a good book? <laughs> interconnected, interconnected short story. Yeah, you can have a great review. Yeah, the author. Is Need and Connect still online? We're doing this one yeah. online. Okay. I'll send the link over. Okay, good. Um, all right, so we're on to the Library Arts and Exhibits Committee. I see some birds on the wall up there. <laughs> um, yes. This is um, the current exhibit, and you can see it on uh, the website as well as on the wall. It's very nice. And um, also, um, I just want to say that this Thursday, two days from now, we're having our, our subcommittee, our committee meeting. Uh, so we'll be deciding on some of the um, proposals and you know what to recommend to this board to approve, um, which is required. Um, actually. Uh, but we're working on 2023, uh, we're all set for 20. So, um, I'll be back in, uh, in October asking for approval of whatever we vote on. Right, and I will say that one of the silver linings of the pandemic has been this wonderful online art that we've always had art on the wall, but now, um, every artist gets to have an online exhibit at the same time, and it's so, you know, accessible. Um, I think it's been a great addition to the library website. And thanks to Gay Allen for her work on that. Okay, so that's library arts and, and the Guyver series. Anything um, happening there? Yes, there an update. Um, I am um, finalizing an event for uh, mid October, and it's going to be. Uh, family event. I know typically MacGyver does programming for adult series or performances, but last year we started with uh, actually a, a child, a children's book reading. So now I want to keep uh, the, that uh, momentum and, and introduce a family based uh, activity. So I'm, I'm, I don't have much more details. I'm still trying to finalize with the performer, but mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a little different and uh, there'll be a lot of fun and music, of course. <laughs> well, well, I was like, very excited to have. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, good. Great. Great. Stay tuned. Good night. Do you have something, Anna, ASAP to me for whatever publicity so we can make sure it makes the newsletter? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah, this week, uh, we did a different okay. to, And I have to send a few questions. I just need a couple of things to figure out. Okay, 
Um, so, do we have anything to report from the friends tonight? Uh, well, there's a book sale coming. I forget exactly what dates, but it's soon. This, this, this month, right? Fifth and sixth. Fifth and sixth. October one. Yeah. Uh, so that's something to look forward to. It's nice to see the last book sale. A lot of people, you know, look to see again. Um, have you, you come yet, Earhart, to one of the book? I'm not going to oh, you, gotta come. Uh, you may remember that <laughs> I've, I've mentioned that we've been giving some thought besides the regular programming that, that the friends have over the course of the year, looking for some sort of mega event, uh, perhaps at the second floor of the town hall. Uh, and I've been doing some reaching out. This has now been a matter of months where we've been, you know, investigating the options. And, uh, uh, and we had a possible date of I think some, some date in April 2023, and it would be to celebrate not only you know the 50th anniversary of the Friends, but also an anniversary, hopefully the Library Foundation where everybody's joining forces. And we had honestly a, a really, someone who would have been great on the hook, uh, and they're still sort of on the hook, but the April date uh, is turning out to be difficult. Uh, so we've decided to, to, and the people we had, you know, who were well known, but not enough to make us feel confident we were going to fill the hall, you know, with an event that that's really going to do it. So we decided to, to, to tentatively push it back until the fall, and hopefully that'll give us time either to reel in who we're talking to, or or to find somebody else. If any, but again, we don't have anything definitive still. So if anybody has has any great ideas for somebody. Uh, who could be a featured speaker but but uh we've had some you know at some point we had our hopes up but then the date didn't quite work out and so we're leaving open the option that maybe we can pull something together in the fall keep it for and uh, so uh john smith library foundation of needham does anyone oh Rob, you're our liaison there, right? So I do not have any updates. Okay. Um, I, I, Carol, I, I don't know if you've heard about anything, but I've not gotten any meeting advice. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully for next meeting, I will have nothing. It's Thursday night and it's here. Oh, okay. Oh, Thursday in here? All right. Yes. And you're invited. <laughs> I am. <laughs> <laughs> and they are not doing Zoom, just so you know. Okay. Do you know, is there a list for that? I have not seen any list. Uh, I just okay. welcome. Okay. Um, yeah, they should be moving you in since you're I got the liaison. Time for the June meeting, but then I got COVID, and then I, I don't and know then about this yeah. But anyway, I'll so be there. I don't know what's going on. Huh? I did send them the uh, link for tonight's meeting so that they knew it was happening, but I never got a response back. Thank you. I'd like to know how their balustrade campaign is going. They're mm -hmm. raising wow. money by you can have your name inscribed on them. Yeah. I've oh. heard that they've had several. Requests come through, so I don't know what type, but they've had several come through. Nice. Okay. So um, that's it, unless we have trustee comments. Anybody want to? We've all done a lot of commenting. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah, really welcome. Thank you. Thanks for doing all that early work. Big like <laughs> <laughs> You had a little focus group right yes, here, right? <laughs> so that's great. Um, okay, so um, I need a motion to adjourn. So no okay. <laughs> Very enthusiastic. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 I like Aye. this pie.